Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac, and this is the all new MacBook Air M4 for 2025. The base model starts at $999, which is down $100 from last year. That will get you a 10 core CPU, 256 gigs of storage, and 16 gigs of RAM. You can option it all the way up to two terabytes of storage with 32 gigs of RAM for $2,199. That's for the 13 inch. There's also a 15 inch model as well. We have four different color options this year. This is the new sky blue option. This is the 13 inch and we have silver starlight and midnight. There's no longer a space gray option. If we flip this over, you can see the options I have here, an M4 chipset, 24 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Let's go ahead and open it up. So we'll go ahead and open the bottom here. Let's open the top. I'm just covering the serial number. There we are. We'll flip it back over and let's open it up and see what sky blue looks like. I haven't seen this yet and let's open this up. This one comes in at 1399 with these options and you can see sky blue. So let's take this out, see what we've got in the box here. So we've got a little bit of paperwork with a power adapter and in here we have MacBook Air and that's it. Again, no stickers. Apple seems to have discontinued those on just about everything. And you'll see a little warranty card. If we set this aside here, we've got a power adapter. So let's see what we've got included. This is their 35 watt power adapter. So you have the option of two USB-C. You can also get a higher optioned one as well. And then we also have a braided cable. So we have MagSafe, but we can charge via USB-C and you'll see it's a nice braided cable to match the overall color. Let me set this aside and we'll take a closer look at the MacBook itself. So I haven't seen this color. Let's remove the wrapper here. There we go. And here is the new sky blue. This looks really nice. However, depending on the light we have here, you can see it compared to midnight. This is the M2 MacBook Air in 15 inch midnight. So that gives you an idea of the overall look. So definitely a little bit different look. And here is an older space gray MacBook. So you'll see that here. So this gives you an idea of the overall color, what it looks like. It's basically a hint of blue, but definitely a really nice looking color. Let me set the other MacBooks aside and we'll open it up. Now, first of all, around the outside edge, we still have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then on the other side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports and then MagSafe. This supports up to two 6K monitors at 60 hertz with this open as well. So that's a really nice update there. Let's go ahead and open it up. It should turn on by itself. There we go. And one of the changes here that you can see physically has to do with the keyboard. The keyboard now on the mute key now has a slash through it. That's something we didn't have before. And just to compare the keyboards, you can see here with the midnight one, there's no slash through the mute key, but there is on the new one. Now we'll go ahead and get this set up. We still have the 13.6 inch diagonal display, 2560 by 1664. It goes up to 500 nits of brightness and it's 60 Hertz. Let's go ahead and set this up. So, We'll get this set up here and first we'll go to English. Now in the future with a future update, we'll be able to use our phone or another device to set this up easily, but we'll go ahead and continue and we'll get it set up. So we'll go ahead and click not now for accessibility, but you have those options. If you'd like them, then we can set up our Wi-Fi network. Now we have a day one update that says this Mac will be updated to Mac OS 15.3. However, we have a later version. We'll update later just to see what it's pre-installed with. We've got data and privacy. We'll tap continue and then we can set it up from another Mac or windows PC and we'll skip that for now. Now we'll go ahead and sign in with my Apple account. Once we're logged in with our account, we can go ahead and put in a password. Now it says, make this your new Mac. We can customize it or leave everything as default. So we'll go ahead and click continue. And then it's talking about Apple intelligence with writing and summarization, the start of a new era for Siri, which is going to happen a little bit later. Let's go ahead and click continue. I like summarize all notifications. So we'll do that. And then we can leave it on file disk encryption or turn this off. We'll click continue and now we'll set up touch ID. So this is pretty fast to set up. Just place your finger on the touch ID sensor. And then again, from some different angles, just to make sure that you're covering your whole finger and then we'll click continue. Now it says, welcome to Mac. We'll wait for it to go to the home screen here. We'll click continue. 
and now we're on the home screen. Now let's see what version is pre-installed since it told us we need an update. We'll go to the Apple and then about this Mac. And now we can see Mac OS Sequoia 15.2. We'll click on it and it's build 24C2101. So it's a couple versions behind. It has 24 gigs of memory or RAM. And let's close this out and see if we have the new wallpaper yet. We may need to do an update to see that. So we'll go down to wallpaper and then we'll scroll down and you can see the iMac wallpaper and it looks like we don't have the latest wallpaper on here. So we'll have to do an update. So what I'll do now is go ahead and install everything so we can run benchmarks later. And then we'll take a closer look at some additional changes here. Now I installed the update for Mac OS Sequoia 15.3.2. We're all up to date. If we scroll down, go to wallpaper, we should have some new wallpaper here. So now we have the radial light blue. This is the new wallpaper for the MacBook Air in this new blue color. So this is really nice. Let's go ahead and close this out. And we have a few different things to take a look at. Now let's take a look at the keyboard. So first we'll turn off the lights to bring on the backlight of the keyboard. You can see it's backlit and we can control that brightness by going into system settings, scrolling down to keyboard, and then we have the brightness here. So we can turn it all the way up or turn it off if we'd like and just have it adjusted on its own if you want to. So let's turn the lights back on and it turns off and the setting goes away. Also, let's take a listen to it. So we'll go into notes and we'll just type a note. Let me turn the microphone so you can hear what it sounds like. So that should give you an idea of what this sounds like. It has good feedback, feels very similar to what we had with the last generation MacBook Air. So a pretty nice keyboard overall. The overall keyboard travel isn't as great as maybe the Pro, but it does have a nice feel to it overall. When it comes to the overall sound of the speakers, well, you can't see the speakers here like you can on the MacBook Pro, but let's take a listen and see what they sound like. So I have a video here that I made recently and it has a little montage in it of camera comparisons. So let's take a listen and see what it sounds like. Overall sound is pretty good. It went up to about 82 decibels or so, so plenty loud for this particular device. We don't have a whole lot of bass, but that's because we have smaller speakers. But in general, it sounds good, good enough to do regular work, editing, typing, listening to music, or whatever you'd like. Now, one thing we have that's new is in this notch here is we have a new 12 megapixel camera. Let's take a look at it as it can record in 1080p. So I'll open up QuickTime here. I've now got this in maximum quality. Let's go ahead and record. Here is the new 12 megapixel camera running at 1080p, like I mentioned, and it gives you an idea of what it looks like. Now we do have things such as center stage, so we can turn that on if we'd like, and it will follow us along. You'll see here I have to continue, but it will follow us around as I move around and sort of keep me centered or whoever's in the screen with you. Of course, we have all the other options with portrait mode, studio lighting, and backgrounds as well. So I think this looks pretty good. It's good enough for a Zoom call or a FaceTime call, but let me know what you think of it in the comments below as far as its microphone compared to this microphone and the overall quality. So let's go ahead and stop that. Now let's run a few different benchmarks. Since this isn't a very intensive machine, typically we'll go into things such as Geekbench and Cinebench. So I do have those installed. Let's see if we have them here. We'll open up Geekbench 6 and see what we get. So I just completed Geekbench 6. It scored 3,617 for single core, 11,774 for multi-core. I ran metal and scored 55,305. Now let's run Cinebench. Now we're running Cinebench 2024, and this is probably going to make the MacBook Air as hot as it will possibly get. So it's quite warm to touch right here. So I thought I'd show you the thermals with a thermal camera. So at the hottest point, let's see what we've got here. So at the very hottest point, it's recalibrating. We've got about 46.7 degrees Celsius. So it is quite warm. There are no fans in here, but it gives you an idea of that. While it's still running, Let's go ahead and flip it over here just quickly and see what we've got on the bottom. 
So on the bottom, if this was sitting on your lap, again, at the hottest point, we're at about 44 degrees Celsius. So it is quite warm. You definitely would want to maybe have this on maybe your jeans or something else as it's hot enough that it might bother your skin. Just depends on how sensitive you are to that. Now I did finish running Cinebench. I did have 161 for the single core CPU and 4,161 for the GPU. Unfortunately, I closed out of it and lost the results, but those were the results overall. It was very fast, much faster than an M1 Max as far as the single core goes. Now when it comes to the disk speed test, let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll run that quickly and you'll see we're scoring about 2,727 megabytes per second write speed and read speed is about the same, 2,695 megabytes per second. So that's what we can expect. I would expect this to go up a little bit if maybe you're running a larger storage size such as two terabytes. Let's go ahead and stop that. And a couple things to note with this is it has Wi-Fi 6E. It does not have Wi-Fi 7. It also has Bluetooth 5.3 and it has a 53.8 watt hour battery. It's the same battery life as last year, but it's slightly larger than the 52.6 watt hour battery of the previous year. It also comes in at 2.7 pounds, so it's fairly light. That's 1.24 kilograms. Using the MacBook Air every day for regular tasks is probably one of the best experiences Apple has to offer. I really enjoy using the M2 MacBook Air. Probably the 15 inch is better for me, but unless you need to do heavy editing, this is great for just about everything else. You can edit 4K video on this, but I probably wouldn't pass about 10 minutes or so of footage, but using it regular day to day, it's great as far as the experience goes. A good keyboard, great trackpad. However, if you wanna edit large footage, maybe you're doing AI modeling or things like that, I would go with the Pro since you have a nicer display and fans to keep it cool. Let me know what you think of the new M4 MacBook Air in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron, I'll see you next time.